Good morning. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Rosalie. Thanks, Kevin, Liz, Lindsay, everyone at SOCAP. You do an incredible job. Now, I have the, uh, the best job uh, here of the three of us this morning uh, because I get to share some good news with you that you don't already know. And that is that you are special. Did we not know that already? <laughs> so why are we special? Because social entrepreneurship and impact investing are inherently about cross-sector collaboration. They're about using the tools, the practices, and the languages of the nonprofit sector, of business and finance, and of public policy. Think of Revolution Foods, for example, a fantastic business that works within a highly regulated, heavily constrained environment of school lunch programs. Or Living Cities, which is a collaboration of over 20 of the largest foundations and financial institutions concerned about development in low-income communities in the United States. Or Microvest, which describes the social ballast of its non-profit owners and the commercial sale of an institutional, uh, extremely uh, innovative approach to the way that it invests in microfinance institutions. And this multilingual leadership is the future. Hillary Clinton talking at the State Department's Impact Economy Initiative. We were over the separation mentality. Paul Polman from Unilever, being less bad, corporate social responsibility is not good enough anymore. We need partnerships that probably haven't been done before. This is Dominic Barton, the Global Managing Director of McKinsey, talking about the need for corporate leaders to be tri-sector athletes. And finally, from the nonprofit world, Leslie Crutchfield and Heather McLeod, Grant, talking about collective impact being about partnership across sectors. Millennials are talking about business as being for improving society. This is the future in their eyes. And Audrey Choi at Morgan Stanley talks about millennials not investing the same way again. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was very insightful. Um, so uh, before we go on with the shtick, I just want to say I always love coming to SOCAP because it's kind of like a gathering of the tribes and kind of like a large extended family reunion. And uh, in working with Ben and Kathy over the past two years doing this research, we've also kind of like become our own little family. Uh, you know, as you just experienced, Ben is kind of like the mom telling you how special you are and attractive and intelligent. Kathy's kind of like the kind of slightly bossy but still very sweet older sister who kind of like <laughs> makes things happen and makes sure you stay on track and you'll experience that during her comments. I'm kind of more like the crazy slightly drunk uncle who makes inappropriate <laughs> comments. So I just want to kind of break, brace yourself for that. So uh, 15 years ago, the, the blended value papers started talking about this idea of uh, mutant managers, and that we needed 21st century leaders who could rise up out of their silo and see across the space and take us somewhere different, somewhere better, somewhere integrated, uh, somewhere more whole, as opposed to bifurcated. And Ben just walked you through a number of very smart and intelligent folks who have also come to that same conclusion, that it's time for a different way to think about leadership and a way to think about how we're moving forward. And we term the phrase multilingual leadership because in our research what we found was that those funds that really were outperforming as impact investing funds, those funds that did best on a, both a financial basis and a social and environmental basis were funds that were led by individuals and teams that could also kind of cross cut. And what we've realized as we've kind of talked this through over time is that these people, if you'll excuse the phrase, kind of dumb fucked their way to the top because they started at Goldman Sachs and they did five years and then they went to the IFC and they did five years and they went to Ghana and they ran a microfinance fund and then they came back and they worked for a foundation and then they wrote a book or a paper or an article. They basically found their way through this process over five, 10, or 20 years of a career. And the problem is, as a community, 
we are all basically winging it. We are basically making it up as we go along, and that's cool, right? That's how you get innovation, that's just the reality that we're playing with, but it really is time that we move from winging it to a more structured approach to thinking about leadership development for impact investing. Now, the, the problem that we have is that foundations, even in things that they claim to care about, such as nonprofit management, invest less than 1% of their annual giving budgets in leadership development initiatives. To say nothing of the fact that things that they talk about caring about, like impact investing, they virtually invest zero. And we, this is why we go to family offices and pension funds and others to really move money into impact investing vehicles. But if that weren't enough, if you think about the offerings that are available to young leaders coming up, to the millennials that Ben talked about, while there's been a doubling of the offerings of dual degree programs at the master's level, where you could in fact be trained in a both and kind of mindset and set of practices, the actual uptake of those offerings is less than 1%. And so, as we think about it, we're talking about leaders that are coming into this space, and we're talking about those of you in this room who spend a lot of time grappling with the fundamentals of what is impact investing. What is it that we really should be focused on and thinking about? And so we spend all this time talking about impact investing as very idiosyncratic and it's very subjective and it's this and it's that. And so we're finding our way through the process, if you will, as opposed to leading ourselves into a process of mutual edification and guidance, of sharing, of collaboration, of really learning the new skill sets that we'll need for the future. And the future really is a function of leaders who understand that successful impact investing is a function of alignment of stakeholder and investor interests. It's a function of a focus on outcomes and performance and impact. It's a function of transparency and being clear on what it is that we're doing and disseminating that to others so we can all grow together into this new role of leadership of the whole. Thanks, Jared. So what can we do about this? How can we develop ourselves and our teams to, to be better multilingual leaders. Well, the first thing we can do is actually elevate the discussion of this concept and commit to it. What does it mean to assess your own skills? What does it mean to assess the skills of your teams? And what can you then put in action to be intentional about developing those skills and talents? What we are excited to invite you to do this year, since the theme of SOCAP is ignition, is to invite you to take an Ignite pledge to think about these issues for yourselves and within your organizations. So first is innovate. How can you decide this year to do something innovative around multilingual leadership within your organization? The second is to guide, to support other organizations who are thinking about doing this. It takes two to be cross-sector, so you can be the recipient of this kind of partnership as well. Network. How often do you attend a conference in a different sector on the area that you are working on? Can you do that more? Include, invite people from other sectors into your work, onto your advisory board, um, into your work in other ways. Talk, talk about what this is like. Um, and the last is educate, uh, which is really to think about how can you cultivate a culture within your organization that supports people with different mindsets and different backgrounds feeling comfortable and contributing uh, to, a, to, a, to a better whole. Um, we are really excited um, this year at SOCAP. We're trying a, a few new things around this idea of multilingual leadership. Um, and we're really inviting you to join with us uh, in figuring that out. The first thing is we released a survey last week. Many people in the room have already taken it. It's about a 10 minute online quiz at bit.ly slash MLL survey. And when you take it, it assesses your skills and knowledge across the three sectors and gives you a score. Uh, and so you can get a sense of where you fall. On Thursday, we're going to run um, an experimental workshop for two hours at 11 o'clock. We have 12 expert impact investors who are going to serve as coaches and walk people through exercises within each sector. We'd love to have you join us at that. And we're going to reveal the results of the survey at that point tomorrow morning. Um, we are also really excited that we have been able to get a preview uh, PDF version of our new book, 
uh, that's coming out next month, but the publisher has allowed us to share one with everyone at SOCAP, and you're going to be getting that through Pathable uh, later today. Hope you'll take a look at it. A lot of the deeper ideas that we are, we are, we have, um, that, that led to this notion of multilingual leadership are in that book. And then last, I'm really excited to say that my organization, which is the Center for the Advancement of Social Entrepreneurship at the Fuqua School of Business at Duke, is going to make this a year of multilingual leadership. We're going to be delving into this issue, publishing blogs, connecting what other people are doing, and we'd really like to invite you to be part of this so that we can learn from you. So please follow us at our Twitter hashtag at Case at Duke, um, or if you want to tweet about this issue, we have uh, claimed the hashtag uh, multilingual. So thank you very much. Thank you.